Why? Hello and welcome everybody. It is Pox again. So today I wanted to give you guys an update to the Mana Righteous Fire build. Uh, we are level 89, still in Solo Cell Found as we're going to be staying here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pop in a quick red tier map and show you guys how the build works and then we'll talk about some updates we've been doing. I must have time. Okay, so my life is still a little bit low. Um, I'm just now starting to add life as our mana region is starting to balance out with it. Uh, I'll be getting up to like 4.5k life very easily. Uh, I've intentionally hindered my life pool with some of my gear just to balance the regeneration better. But since we're getting ready to go into red tier maps, I decided it's time to bump the life up. Legion! Okay, this may be a rip. I'm not gonna lie. I don't know if we can do red tier Legion yet. But we're sure gonna try. Oh, that's the danger spot right there. Doesn't actually hit that hard. Nice. I think we just found a blue pearl. That's our new amulet base until we get our, uh... Until we get our, uh... Whatchamacallit? Azuri's foible. Nice! Got an upgrade! Hell yeah! That's perfect. Okay, give me that. Give me some of this. Take this one over here. Got a Joffrey's. Okay. Joffrey's is good for Chaos Res. No life on it, though. I'm sure a lot of people are going to be asking what that explosion is from. That's the new Abyssal Cry, also known as uh, Infernal Cry, I believe it's called now. Works wonders for a Righteous Fire build, especially a Hierophant with all the area scaling. So the nice thing about this is, if you notice this back here, I'm just going to tap one dog. And the explosion basically chain reacts. It does proc Elemental Equilibrium, but the Elemental Equilibrium does not hurt us in any type of way because it immediately gets overridden by an Orb of Storms. Looks like another nice blue pack of snakes over there. So our single target's a little low right now. Our Scorching Ray is only level 17 in a 4-link. Uh, as we just flipped our gems. Okay, so to talk about some changes that we've done with the character. To help you guys out. Um, the first thing that we've done is I've went and moved Steel Skin on my left click. If you don't want to use Steel Skin, you can use Arcane Cloak. But the reason why we don't use Arcane Cloak is... 
As we're not in Trade League, I don't have access to a lot of easy mana recovery and mana regen items. If you have Giga Boosted Regen, you can try out Arcane Cloak, it'll be a larger bubble. But simply putting Steel Skin on left click just makes it trigger all the time whenever you're walking. It's basically automatic, which is pretty nice. So our staff is exactly the same. I am going to um, see if I can find a random, uh, what is it called? Basically like reroll fire affixes or reroll the values of fire affixes that we're gonna try to find in the uh, in the new leak mechanic and harvest. So that way the fire multi can go up to like 55. My minimum fire roll can go up to like 80 and then the burn will probably go down, but that doesn't really matter. I just ended up getting this ring. I'm working on getting my chaos resist pretty good. Just because since our life value is pretty low, we are susceptible to one-shots from Chaos damage. We don't really get one-shot very often in Path of Exile until like red tier maps. In yellow tier maps, you'll usually take a bunch of hits very quickly that a lot of people mistake as a one-shot. With this build, it's extremely easy to mitigate multi-hits. And I'll explain in a second as our life basically... Once, once this goes down, I'll show you how much one life last heals. So, like I was saying, I'm trying to get my Chaos Resist pretty high. 20% is actually pretty good now with this new ring swap. I'm using an Essence Worm with Malevolence for damage. If you are low level, I would recommend, highly recommend running Clarity. You don't really need Malevolence until you're in maps, um, but it is a massive damage increase, so that's one thing that's really nice. My Amulet, still not exactly super good. We did just get a new Blue Pearl, so I'm probably going to craft on this. Plus one fire gems or plus one spell gems is really good. Azuri's Foible is also really, really good. Azuri's Foible allows you to bring up your maximum life value by a ton because of how much mana it offers and because of the regen as well. Uh, my boots are pretty sick. I'm trying to roll a enchant for I think it's 80% mana regen per second whenever you cast a spell. So this is my life. I'm going to click one life flask. That's how much a life flask heals me for. What that means is... When I get hit by a mob that hits me for 3k and 40% of that damage hits my mana pool, I know that I can always just click my life flask and I'm literally full HP. So when you're diving into dangerous encounters, feel free to just tap your life flask every so often when you think you're going to get hit because it's actually nuts and there's no way your mana is going to run out. Now, if you have an Indigon and you're obviously in Trade League or maybe you got it already in SSF, Indigon is nuts for this build because it makes your mana regen flask apply to your life which means you don't need a life flask and your life will basically pretty much always be full unless you get one shot or something like consecutively hits you back to back for like 5k 5k as an example there's also a weird agnostic bug if people have been experiencing this if you look at my frame rate you can tell it's spiking like crazy when i press one button my frame rate will fix the bug that's currently happening with indigo with the uh, agnostic is if you are running Agnostic and your mana globe is empty and you don't have an MP flask running, you will lag like this. So for people who are experiencing this lag, unfortunately it's GGG's way of basically just saying get good. So try to keep your mana flask juggled in the early levels if you are experiencing this weird lag mechanic that's basically happening. So going over the rest of my gear, like I said, boots, we're aiming for that boot enchant. Belt, I do have a Redeemer Belt at the moment. Redeemer Belt can roll Mono Recovery, so I am trying to get a Mono Recovery roll on this Redeemer Belt. It's probably one of the worst bases I could get because ES is literally nothing to me. Um, but, you know, nonetheless, Mono Recovery will be super nice for entering red maps with, you know, minus max and reduced recovery and just a bunch of just general stuff. It's pretty nice to have. Uh, gloves, not super good. Going over the Passive Tree... Um, the tree is pretty much exactly as planned. The only things left to pick up at the moment would be like Profane Chemistry is pretty good. Obviously, Jewel Sockets are going to be pretty nice um, whenever you can get them. I do have Clear Mind in. I don't really like Clear Mind a whole bunch, but it gives Mana Regen and it gives me okay spell damage. Spell damage, obviously, for our Scorching Ray, not for our Righteous Fire. Um, I'm also trying to get a Cluster Jewel, but it seems really difficult to get a Cluster Jewel um, that, that's like kind of rolled properly. All the baby rolls on them, like these small passive nodes here, I haven't found any that are usable for me. The only one that's usable for me is like, I think this, Increased Effective Non-Curse Auras, which is for Malevolence, but that's not really very good. So I'm still waiting to see what I can do with my Cluster Jewels. Delirium's kind of hard to get going in SSF. Also, I'd like to state that um, there's a bug with Righteous Fire right now, where even though your life is at 1, Righteous Fire does not turn off, even though it specifically states 
that Righteous Fire turns off at 1 HP. To go over my links and let you guys know what I'm running, I've got Conk Effect. Yes, this is my AoE with Conk Effect. So, Conk Effect with Righteous Fire, Ellie Focus, Efficacy, Burn Damage, and Ink AoE. I gotta flip this Burn Damage. In my Scorching Ray, I've got just Scorching Ray, Efficacy, Infused Channeling, Burn Damage. Um, five and six link, not 100% sure off the top of my head. Probably either Controlled Destruction or Ellie, I think Ellie Focus is stronger, plus um, Inspiration. Now, if you want more damage on your RF, you can drop Ink AoE. Uh, as Ink AoE is not the biggest difference in the world, you can trade off Ink AoE for Inspiration. But for Inspiration to work, you'll have to trigger it somewhere else, like ideally your Scorching Ray. In my boots, I've got Increased Critical Strikes, Orb of Storms, Flammability, Curse on Hit, which basically keeps up Elemental Equilibrium, sorry, Elemental Equilibrium, Elemental Overload, and applies Flammability. For my gloves, I've got a nice interaction, which is Smoke Mine, Infernal Cry, Urgent Orders, and Second Wind. I'm a big fan of Smoke Mine. I will always use Smoke Mine uh, as I really enjoy it, and I'll explain to you guys why I really like Smoke Mine. Now, this is not something that you guys have to use. This is just some, this is a personal preference to me. Smoke Mine allows you to do nice mechanics such as this, and you can kind of rubber band your character and bounce to where you need to go. Also, it's nice because since I do spam a lot, if I happen to run out of charges on Flame Dash, I will always have one extra charge on my Smoke Mine. It's not really that big of a deal, but there are random scenarios where like you'll run out of charges because you're spamming or you're trying to clear maps quickly. So this is nice knowing I can always have this extra charge on my smoke mine. So it's basically Second Wind, Urgent Orders, and Infernal Cry. Infernal Cry being, you know, that big boom that you guys saw. Then I've got Empower Leveling with a Flame Dash, Arcane Surge, and Archmage. The reason why I'm using Archmage is because... My mana cost on my Flame Dash costs literally... Oh, whoops. There we go. Costs like literally nothing. It's 13 mana. So putting in Archmage ramps up the mana cost. Eventually I will 4-link this. I don't know what I'm going to 4-link it with yet. Probably increased duration, I think. Uh, I have to see like where my links allow me to go. But the reason why I use Archmage is to trigger a high-level Arcane Surge. Uh, I thought that this was not going to be worth it, but since you end up getting so much busted regeneration, it doesn't really matter. The Arcane Surge is good because 0.9% of your maximum mana ends up being nuts. So without clarity in 567, Arcane Surge puts us to 842, which means in one second we regen all the mana we used for the Flame Dash. But if you look at the mana, it literally is instant. Like, it's completely instant. So the goal here is going to be we're going to link up increased duration, and then I think I can go to a level 16 Arcane Surge because I believe it's like 206 or 217 mana for like the next breakpoint. Yep, that's pretty much about it. I've been pretty happy with the character other than, you know, this. Um, I think now my next couple of levels are probably just going to be into life. Uh, I'm probably going to drop a little bit of damage. So like, I think Firewalker and this little Ellie node will probably go towards Profane Chemistry as the uh, the increased life recovery from Flask doesn't really matter because it literally full heals me, but the increased effect, so Flask Applied, you have 8% increased effect, is perfect for our Ruby Flask, our Basalt Flask, our Quicksilver, and the Eternal Mana that we're using, which is really cool. That pretty much summarizes it. Uh, I'll let you guys know what i'm going to be doing next unfortunately it is going to be a bit of a grind for us to get the next breaking point i think with our character there's fire damage multiplier gloves you can get i, I don't remember who it's from it might be from drox the warlord his base um and then of course like i was saying with the belt an interesting thing to note is i don't know if life recovery scales agnostics um conversion so agnostic will heal me like a little bit over a thousand hp a second from my mana pool. I don't know if life recovery scales that amount because it does say recover. We had an interesting talk about it on the chat today. If it does, it might be worth it to get life recovery if you can get it on certain pieces. But the thing is, is it doesn't necessarily matter because the second you go Indigon, I think you don't care about life recovery at all because your mana flask is like a god for your life pool essentially. All right, that's pretty much about it. That's literally everything I could possibly think of. So. Hope you guys had... Oh, yeah, and Uber Lab. Uber Lab. One more thing. 
Uberlap. So, Uberlap, you've got some interesting choices. I decided to go with Arcane Blessing to give myself essentially 100% uptime on Arcane Search. Not for Arcane Search, for Ailment Immunity. So I can't get Shocked, Frozen, um, Shocked, Frozen, Ignited, and I think Chill falls under that category. Which just allows you to have more room with your flasks, which means if you wanted to run something like a Witchfire Brew, um, you could absolutely run a Witchfire Brew, which is really nice. Um, if you want more clear, you can go Pursuit of Faith. Pursuit of Faith gives you increased damage per enemy killed by you or your totem, which would just be you. Um, that's really good, because when you're running through a map, you could probably kill 50 mobs in one second, and this stacks, I'm pretty sure, infinitely. So this is something that people people who are just doing a straight run and don't want to stop, Witchfire Brew Pursuit of Faith should allow you to just zip through content. So that's something else to think of. Anyway, now that's pretty much about it. Remember, if you guys have any questions, feel free to look at the previous builds that I've uploaded for this character or the guides. Then feel free to come, come to my stream and ask me any questions you guys have or drop them in the comments below and I'll answer them once I can. Take care, have a wonderful time, and I'll see you boys all tomorrow.